to utilize the diagnostics on the AI platform, log into the AI platform as you normally would. Once you're logged in, navigate to the appropriate company or personal node that you would like to perform diagnostics on. Once in, select a sensor that's on a particular asset. Okay, select an asset that you're interested in performing diagnostics on. Once in the asset, there are a few questions that the wizard walks you through, the orientation type, the frequency of the motor that's driving it in hertz, and at this time you'll need to configure the asset according to, according to what it is physically configured as in, in the setup. You'll choose the speed, indicate whether it's on a variable speed or not, drive, indicate the equipment category, Changing the equipment category will prompt some additional questions to come up depending on the category that you choose. In this case, it'll ask you it's an overhung centrifugal pump. It'll ask you for the number of rotor, rotor blades on the pump. It'll ask you some questions about the ball bearing. And um, it'll also ask you if there is one to include, you can include an intermediate. So then select the bearing arrangement type. And for a centrifugal pump, there's no need to do the additional um, rotor blades. You'll want to just put it into the primary where it's asking you for the initial number of rotor blades. If it's a multi-stage, you can add additional rotor blades as needed. Okay, then, then once you've configured the driven, you can configure the driver, which is typically the electric motor, by clicking on the tab. Then from the from the drop-down menus, choose how the how the driven is being is being uh, driven. Once you've selected the driver, you you can select what the driver is that is that is inputting the energy to the driven element. In this case, it's an electric motor, and it'll ask you some mandatory information about that motor. Is it AC? Is it DC? Is it on a VFD or not? So choose the appropriate one. Then it asks you some things about the driven arrangement type. Try to answer these according to what you have. In this case, it is direct drive and balanceable with ball bearings. Number of rotor bars, if you know. This is not a mandatory field. Bearing arrangement type. In this case, we have all ball bearings with cooling and cooling and fan. Don't forget to save each of these components as you go through. Okay, now we have the driver, the driven. We're ready to add an intermediate if one exists. An intermediate could be like a coupling or a gearbox. In this case, we're going to select a, a intermediate and we will tell it it is a coupling. And in this case it is a flexible coupling. So we'll choose coupling, next drop down, no variable speed, and we'll choose flexible coupling. All right. You have to name this component. This is just an intermediate. So you can choose intermediate with the same name as the uh, as the drive and the driven components, just so that the association is made and they're all, all one asset. All right. Don't forget to save these each step of the way. And if you'd like, you can put driven or driver in front of each as needed. Okay, once you save this, point now that you've set up the asset, you're ready to start beginning to look at some analytics on that asset. First thing to do is choose all the history of the of the asset in question, the asset train, and select an area of interest where you have some good FFTs and you want to look at some diagnostics on a particular FFT. Choose some FFTs from the timeline below the trend data. And then you can scroll down, take a look at those FFTs, make sure they look reasonable. Okay, and then we're using a synthetic baseline, which means no other, no other FFTs chosen. You can run the diagnostics, and the diagnostics will give you some possible faults and some possible action to take based on those faults. Now I'd like to rerun the same 
asset train using some baseline FFTs. Typically I'm choosing alarm FFTs, but typically you would choose FFTs that were taken when the, when the asset was running at a steady state condition and those will be used to compare against the FFT in question prior to a, you know prior to uh, some activity in the FFT that might indicate an impending fault. Okay, so I, I've labeled these FFTs. I mark those FFTs as baseline FFTs. And then I go back up to the FFT of interest and I hit get diagnostics. And now this time it's using the baseline FFT, so it's going to take a little longer to come up with a result. But here it is, and there's a result. And you can see that using a synthetic FFT versus the baseline, in this case, did not change significantly the, the results. However, in some cases, you will see a significant difference based on, the, based on the quality, or the differences, I should say, in the synthetic FFT versus the baseline FFTs.